PC. Yeah. do but imagine we all have a right to do it. This uh, land here was held by the I think it's called Mayor Alderman Trust for the citizens of Nottingham. So the council base is meant to facilitate you getting here. Now oh, a bit puffed out just moved the piano. If we look over to here you'll see this is where you can have a wedding. Now I've been told by the council that only one vehicle is allowed in here if you're having a wedding or I wanted two. And she also had about 13 guys on scooters wanted to come down, park out here, take some photographs. Unfortunately it's against their rules to come down here before 4.30. Therefore nobody can come. So to show you how people can react and do things nicely anyway, I'm just gonna have a rest, sit down and read a book for five minutes. Because uh, it has been quite tiring. Pay attention to my book as well, you'll like it, it's got lots of facts in it. But this is part of your lesson about who's who and who is they. See you in a bit. Thank you young man. We did have all these rights. And you could come to the square, but if somebody actually owns it, other than ourselves, they can tell you what to do. 11th of the 11th, 2011. Council said there was nobody here, nobody had any rights, they've always had the rights over the square, they charge the rents and everything else, and there was nobody dwelling here, occupying it. They didn't have any rights, if you remember, Occupy was here. So they had to fraudulently fill in the paperwork saying that there, no, there were no covenants, ties, or even assumptions of rights from the Alderman Trust. Well, there was. There were people here. So we've been to pick up the paperwork. Well, luckily we've been studying this for a while. And the two most important bits which would prove fraud are the affidavits of uh, Stephen Fryer, who said he's the only one who's got any rights here, acting as a conveyancer for the corporation, Nottingham City Council. Now you now own this because nobody else had any rights to be here and nobody was in occupation. The reason why they own it is because land registry will say, well, nine-tenths of the law. <laughs> nine-tenths of the law was ignored when there were people dwelling here. They stole it, but the paperwork to show who was fraudulent has suddenly disappeared. It no longer exists. This is land registry. They're confusing people. So as a nice way of explaining you can take this back. I can take it back. I did a little bit of work on this. Why should I bother? If you're all asleep, you're all asleep. Let's see if you want to go to a wedding on the 26th this month and somebody tells you you're not allowed. In fact, they didn't say that. They said, we will fine you. <laughs> In other words, they will tax you. So, 13 scooters, £30 a piece if we pay immediately. I'd like to raise a little bit of money that so somebody can have the wedding they want. Might get arrested. You won't if you know what you're doing. So, um, I'll let this man tune up and now I'm going to turn into Bob Hood for you today. So, bear with me, see what happens. I think we've got five minutes for a break and a cigarette. See you in a bit. I'm 
explaining how to deal with this, but you need a character so you'll leave me alone to get on with my life. So if you want any help from Bob, Bob Hood will be with you, sweating like a sweaty thing. I'm following you. No, I'm not following you, am I? That's weird. I'm following him. If a peacock finds a pot leaf, dedicated, this story is dedicated to Dr. Glenn Carman and Trudy Carman. One day, Peter the Peacock was feeling a little sad, so he decided to take a walk. But today was different because, as he was going for a walk, he discovered a strange leaf in his path and wondered what it was. He scooped it up in his beak and carried it off with him to find his friend Benjamin Beaver. He walked up to Benjamin Beaver and asked what the unusual leaf was he'd found. Benjamin told him it was known as a medical marijuana or cannabis and it was very useful medicinal plant that he himself in fact used to help with his chronic pain from working so hard on his dam. He also told Peter of how he used the hemp plant to build the dam instead of cutting down trees and it was helping save the other animals' environments. There are so many uses, Benjamin assured Peter. Ask anyone, you'll see. Peter thanked Benjamin for the information and headed down the path, hoping to find more information about medical marijuana. After he passed the river, Peter came across an old owl sitting in a branch with a small white stick hanging out of her beak. She told him her name was Ophelia and that she had glaucoma, which hurt her eyes and made it hard for her to catch food at night. Then she explained that she rolled in the stick was medical marijuana. I'm so thankful that now I have medical marijuana. I don't know where I would be without it, Ophelia admitted. Peter said goodbye and continued on his path. Soon enough, along came a spider that dropped down from a web. Hello darling, my name is Scarlet. I've been working very hard weaving this web. I've been waiting for someone to come and admire it with me. Not long ago, I suffered such awful migraine headaches that I couldn't even think of spinning such an intricate, intricate web. Scarlet confessed, well, what changed? Peter asked. Oh, I started vaporizing medical marijuana. And now look at my web. I gaze at her masterpiece. It really was something. Scarlet, but I must get going. And with that, Peter went on his way. Not too long after meeting Scarlet, Peter stumbled upon a curious creature. I'm Cletus the camel, he announced. Wow, I've never seen a camel in the forest before. Where are you heading? Peter asked. I was just walking, uh, I was just ta talking a walk to chew some medical marijuana stems so I can eat at my family reunion. They say it's, ha it's a side effect of marijuana, no, I can't even say it. Medical marijuana that increases your appetite, but when you can't seem to get hungry on your own, it's helpful to have. And as for dry mouth, I got that covered. Cletus says, looking at the two humps on his back that store water, well, I'm finally hungry, I better get home. There it they exchanged goodbyes and Peter was back on his journey. Peter came across the clearing right before his house and he decided to stop at the rhino ranch he'd passed many times. He was greeted by an older rhino that he had later learned name was Rocco. Rocco had once been a strong, healthy rhino until he was diagnosed with cancer. Rocco told Peter of how he had undergone a harsh process called chemotherapy that left him feeling constantly nauseous. Doctors tried to treat it with prescription drugs, but nothing helped until he was recommended to smoke medical marijuana. It was finally something that worked out without the side effects of harmful prescription drugs. Peter promised to return to the Rhino Ranch, said goodbye and went on his way. He stopped 
As he walked past his neighbour's house, the four ruster pigs, they were known medical marijuana patients, but Peter didn't actually know why they needed it. So he decided to stop by and ask. He knocked on the door. Who's there, Mum? One of the pigs called from behind the door. Hello, I'm Peter the Peacock from next door. They quickly opened the door and snatched Peter in. What can we do for your mum? said the four ruster pigs in union. Well, actually, I was just wondering why you need medical marijuana. I've ran into so many creatures today that it may help. I was curious how you became patients, replied Peter. The four ruster pigs took it in turns telling Peter how they'd been losing sleep ever since the wolf moved in down the street. I eventually went to the doctor and found that they had insomnia. Their doctor recommended medical marijuana because it was natural and wouldn't harm their bodies but it would help them sleep. Peter thanked the four Rasta pigs for answering his questions and said goodbye. As he was pushed out of the door, the very frantic looking... Oh, I must have missed the page. No, I didn't. As he was pushed out of the door, a very frantic rabbit hopped up to Peter, heard him say, Oh no, my doctor's appointment was 30 minutes ago. I'm late. Peter, Peter wobbled over to the mysterious rabbit. Hello, Mr. Rabbit, are you lost? Asked Peter. Oh, no, no, no. My name is Rupert and I'm not lost. I'm just late, very late. I'm on my way to get my medical marijuana license to help me with my anxiety. Wow, medical marijuana helps with anxiety too, Peter explained. It sure does, but I'd better be going. I don't want to keep the doctor waiting. Rupert said as he hopped off and Peter thought all the different creatures he came across that he never would have suspected were medical marijuana patients. He was amazed by the array of condition it helped and wondered if it could help him too. Peter watched Rupert, the rabbit, hop off the medical marijuana clinic. He thought how depressed he'd been lately and decided to talk to the doctor to see if medical marijuana would make him feel better. It would be natural, like the four ruster pigs mentioned, and wouldn't have the side effects of prescription drugs. Peter gets his medical marijuana license and finally he feels much better. A smile on his face, he fans out his colourful wings and shows off his beautiful feathers. As Peter has found a natural way to feel okay, he's happy again thanks to marijuana. Now, that was five minutes of just reading a book. Dressed as Bob Hood, it's making me very hot and very sweaty. This is just a children's story book. Too many people, unfortunately, are believing what they're told and not what they know. Wisdom is when you experience things. Wisdom is when you know for yourself. Knowledge, or should we call it intellect, you can only give the knowledge that you, someone's told you. And lots of things you've told which aren't true. You're not allowed to be in this square because somebody else owns it. You used to own it. I can take it back if you want me to, but if not, Carry on, the next book we'll be reading will be a zombie one. <laughs> it's been good to see you, but really, as I say, I can take all of this and I can keep it for myself because it's a game and you've got to know about the name. If someone's telling you they're in charge of you, they need your name, just say no. Simply say no. Don't say no to drugs, particularly this one because it isn't. Say no to drugs. Say yes to getting well and being able to have a full, beautiful life. Please learn to say no, it's easy, or become them, or part of them, that's the danger. I can't live in a world without love, and I can't live in a world full of zombies. Anyway, we've got to push the piano back up the hill now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Keith. You're very welcome. Say <laughs> mad as a fish.